Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and in today's video I will show you how you can customize your ZBrush interface. So without further ado, let's get started. So if you never change your ZBrush interface, this is probably what uh, your interface should look like. And first, before talking about how you can customize your interface and put uh, any buttons that you want on it, I will just show you first how you can set up the document on which you will work. So the document in ZBrush is this canvas that you have here and it's just um, like the size, the resolution of the windows, uh, it doesn't affect anything else. But that's cool to set it up to have something cool to work on because like for example here you can see that there is some free space. So first what we need to do is to open the document panel and drag it somewhere. So I will just open it here and by clicking on this little icon you can drag it uh, on, a, on a side panel here. Uh, if you double click on those uh, arrows there, you can open or close any panel you want. You have this on both sides, also at the bottom of the brush. And this way you can place some panels the way you want. So first we're gonna change the resolution of the canvas. To do so, we just need to create a new document. And here, if you just toggle on the auto fit window size here, what ZBrush will do is to fit as much as it can the free space that you have here. So if I just now create a new document, I don't want to save anything because it just like the, the size as I told you earlier, so it doesn't affect anything that is inside, so your 3D model or whatever, so no. And you can see that now it filled uh, as much as it could this, the free space that I had here. So now I got a bigger space to work on and that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's what this button does, but you can also uh, play with the resolution manually if you want. So for example, when I'm making my renders, I usually put the resolution to like 3000 to have a, a bigger image, but to work um, something around uh, 1500, something like this is, is, is good enough. Something that is pretty cool in ZBrush is if you don't know what a button does, you can just by hover overing a button with control key pressed, uh, this will pop a window that is telling you what this button does. So that's pretty cool if you're discovering the software or you just don't remember what something does. Just go on the, the button with control key and ZBrush will tell you what this does. So that's pretty cool. And now that we have the good size for the document, if we want to have a flat color instead of the this uh, background a gradient here, we can just do that by putting this slider, the background gradient range, to zero. So now we got a flat color, and if you want to change this color, you can just do that by holding your click on those uh, buttons here, and that will give you a color picker, and now you can just put this into the color palette to select any color that you want. And same for the, here the, it's the border of the document, if you want them to be more visible, for example. You can see that now I got some, some red uh, here. So now that you have a document that you like, if you want to tell ZBrush to open this particular document every time you start ZBrush, you just need to click on the Save as Startup Document button. And now every time you open ZBrush, it will be with this document. So you won't have to redo this again, um, get rid of the, the gradient, putting the resolution, etc. Uh, but keep in mind that this is just for your ZBrush. Like here, I think it didn't create a file for this. If you want to create a file to be able to transfer it to another computer or share it with other people, what you need to do is to save this like this, and then you can open your file on another ZBrush or computer, whatever, um, right here. And in general, in ZBrush, that's the way it works. You can make a configuration. You can tell ZBrush to open this um, every time you start ZBrush, but it won't necessarily create a configuration file. If you want to do so, you will have to save this uh, configuration and then you will be able to share it and open it where you want. Once you're done with your document, if you also want to change the material that ZBrush opened by default, uh, let's say you don't like this red one or you just prefer another one, what you just need to do is go into your material library here, select any material that you want. So for me, it's the basic material that I like and just save this as a startup material right here. 
So now we can start to customize the interface. And to do this, we need to go to Preferences. I will put this right here. Config, and just click on the Enable Customize button. By doing this, you can see that here I got a bit more free space that appears. And it's just uh, something where you can put some uh, buttons, icons, whatever you want. Uh, and if you didn't put anything on it, when you when you click again on the Enable Customize, it will stop the Customize mode in ZBrush and you see that if there's nothing, the panel just closed the free space that were there. So let's start the customization. And from the moment you click on this button, now any button that uh, are placed into any menu, you can take them and place them into your interface. To do so, you need to control alt click and drag any button on your interface. And if you want to remove a button, you just need to control alt click and drag this button into your canvas. So this is the way you can customize your interface easy brush. It's pretty simple as you can see. It just takes a bit of time to know what to place and where to place it to have something as optimized as possible. But that's pretty simple and that's cool because it allows you to make the interface that you want. You can really make whatever you want, place what you want, where you want. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. And if you want to put anything that is placed into kind of a library like this, for example, if you'd like to place some brush or material into your interface, what you will have to do is go into the proper menu of it and not uh, trying to put them from this library like here you can see that if i try to control alt and put them here it doesn't work so to do so you will need first to go to the menu so let's put this here and now i can just control alt click and drag them into my interface if you'd like to take a brush that you can't see right here you just need to select them from this big library like for example i will take this op slash one and you can see that it just appeared there so you can really put what you want you just need to select them first if you don't see them uh, right here and that's the same for materials uh, alpha texture if you want to to use those here you can see that i got some white button and i don't want that because it's take too much space for nothing. So if you want to have just some regular square button, what you need to do is go back to preferences, interface, UI, and you can just click on the white button to deactivate it. And now you can see that I got some square one. So that will take a bit less space than before and you will be able to place uh, way more buttons on your interface if you want to. And also you can, if you want change the button size of uh, anything into your interface and to do so you just need to uh, play with this slider just take note that it won't appear uh, right now it will be applied the next time you open ZBrush uh, and for your information I'm working on a 23 inches screen and I got uh, 42 as a button size so maybe that can help you a bit and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the interface, I think. Uh, it's pretty simple, just uh, need to take a bit the time to do it correctly. But as you can see, when you know how to do it, uh, it's pretty simple. Just one last thing is that if you want now to store the interface that you made, you will first need to get rid of anything that you don't want into your interface because uh, if, like, for example, if I save this like this, every time I will open the brush, there will be and normally the brush and preferences uh, windows that I don't want. So you just need to get rid of it first. I uh, think also about um, clicking on enable customize to deactivate the customize mode. Like this, everything returned back to normal. And now I just need to go to preferences and store config. By doing so, every time I open the brush, it will open this proper configuration and if you want to save this configuration you can just save ui and this will create a file you can find right here so user public uh, public document your zbrush data version and the startup and you can also load them right here uh, let's say on a work computer for example and then start config to tell on your work computer that you want this interface to be launched every time you open zbrush now also, if you want to change the color of your interface, you can go to eye color here and just click and hold on any color button. So all those buttons um, and take this speaker 
to the color palette here and that will change the color of the corresponding button so you got two uh, color for each button because there's a kind of a gradient system for each icon but as you can see right here if i just take the same color it appears flat and you can do this for any button that you want so let's say i just want to put some blue into my buttons and sliders now nah, it's good but if you want, you can change any color that you want. Like you can change the background here, the interior of the of any icon right here. Here, if you go to the top right, you can switch between many configuration that ZBrush has by default. Um, as you can see, there's um, a lot of different stuff. And also, if you want, you can switch between different layout by clicking right here. And when you're done with the colors, what you just need to do is go back to config. And then you just need to restore the configuration file because it will take both the interface and the color. But I think that if you save uh, your file, this will just be the layout. So the way you arrange anything. And if you want to save also the color, you will need to save the color right here and load it right there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. As you can see, it's pretty simple. And um, there's another thing that I can show you that can be pretty cool for you, is if you want to create some custom hotkeys for your brush, for example, what you just need to do is to go, for example, to the standard brush here. I will Control Alt, click on it. And you can see that now at the top, we can see press any key combination to a stamp custom hotkey. Uh, and you can uh, escape or just delete any hotkey that you put, like just follow the instruction. And if I press one, you can see that now on the brush, it says standard one. So I will do the same for the move brush. Let's say I want the three uh, as a shortcut. And now you can see that I got move three standard one and I can switch between the two just by pressing these hotkeys. That can be pretty handy if you want to use this. And when you're done with your hotkeys, you can just go to preferences, hotkeys, and save them right here, store them like for the configuration and load them on another computer right here. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and you find it useful. If so, like this video and subscribe for more content like this. I will try to make a bit more tutorial now. And I will also make another video where I show you my interface and I explain you what are the different buttons that I put here and there and why uh, did I choose to put those. So what's my workflow, uh, how I use them, etc. So thanks for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye guys.